Welcome to TJ's podcast. Oh, we got something big going on today. There's a whole bunch of stuff to cover. Today is another law day, uh, just because we talk about things that, uh, that interest me that I think will interest you and, um, our, um, official TJ's podcast, legal expert, Ryan Toomey, uh, Texas attorney will be on, uh, to discuss some, um, some ins and outs of the class action lawsuit against Ozempic, which, um, you know, I know everybody's listening. Everybody's either wanting to take something like that to lose weight, or you're scared to take something like that to lose weight. If you, if you need to lose weight, I know, you know, some, some people are not in the market to be losing weight. Um, but you know, Calitrin is, is basically what you need to be doing. Order Calitrin at uh, toploss.com. Um, so we're going to we're going to start by getting right into the Graham Slam because Riggins has found something online that's freaked him out that I think is just absolutely hilarious, and that is um, a woman who uh, has posted uh, is a TikTok on SouthernLiving.com, like a Southern um, Living magazine thing. It, it's a yeah, it's a reel on Instagram. Yeah, okay. Uh, from Southern Living Magazine, yeah. All right, and it's this young woman who's uh, dressed in a flowery uh, dress, you know, trying to look as uh, old school Southern as you can look, and she's very, very Southern. Uh, cute as a bug, she? in a rug. She's adorable, uh, and she is showing how to um, how to prepare what her family always has as a side dish. Uh, with their Easter meal, and um, well, even though you can't see it, the the audio of this is um, is a good explanation of what she's doing. She tells it well. One of the most southern salads out there is pear salad, not fresh pear salad, canned pear salad. But what exactly is pear salad? I am so glad you asked. Canned pear halves, a dollop, a hefty dollop of mayonnaise topped with some shredded cheddar cheese. And that's it. Some people like to get fancy with their pear salad and put the pear half on a lettuce leaf and top it with a cherry. But in my family, we don't get too fancy with our pear salad. The only fancy part about ours is that we always serve it on a deviled egg plate. In my family, Easter is not complete without a deviled egg plate or two of pear salad. Happy Easter. Mm, it is so good. I'm telling you. What? Okay. So Riggins sends me a note and says, well, what the blank is this? I've never heard of this after 36 years in the South. So he's lived in the South his whole life. Never heard of a pear salad. Never. And it grossed you out to look at it? To uh, see what yeah, that is disgusting. <laughs> I like all those ingredients. Yeah, but that is vile. Okay, well, um, that is that's an old, old Southern r recipe. I mean, um, but I always liked you know because I'm all into into food and, and cooking and all that stuff. But I, I love the history of foods, and I, I try to figure out the region of the South that that was a, a big deal. Um, and it, I'm pretty sure that it's a Southeastern thing. So yeah. you grew up in the Southeast. You should have heard of that. If you know any old Southern people, um, in Louisiana, where I grew up, I had heard of it, but we never really had that when, when I was a kid. Um, and I think the reason I think it's more of a Southeastern thing is because in, in the oldest, explanations of this salad they say use a, a mayo mayonnaise salad dressing kind of thing and then they'll put they have it in parentheses dukes yeah dukes brand which is a southeastern brand in louisiana we use blue plate mayonnaise mm -hmm. so that's what i'm thinking that it's from the, the southeast the comments the only comments i saw people it seemed like people in georgia knew about it yeah. if there were any they said, oh, I'm from Georgia, and I've heard of this. So I think mm -hmm. maybe it's a Georgia thing. I don't know. Now, but th the combination is just wild. Here's the thing. Um, would you try it? Yes. Okay. Well, then I may whip it up and whip it out today okay. <laughs> and bring it in tomorrow for the podcast if you'll try it. Yeah, I'll try it. 
Yeah, I, I've I, never had it either. It looks disgusting, but I love pears. I do too. I love cheese and and I love mayonnaise. I sure. don't want it. I wouldn't hit a dog in the butt with a cherry though. But the cherry on top. And I don't want any lettuce and either. a piece of lettuce underneath. It's like I don't yeah. know. And, and there's geez. no there's no way that that is uh, better than deviled eggs. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I go. Uh, I, I haven't even decided what all I'm going to add to my deviled eggs this year when I'm doing it. I'm going to spice it up a little bit, maybe put some scrimp in it, you know, some stuff like that. But there's no way I'm choosing this, no matter how it tastes. I, I, there's no way it can taste good enough to replace a deviled egg. I don't think so. And she's got that pear half, you know, it's got the mm. you know indent in it, and she just loads that pocket up with mayonnaise. It was like, oh, 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 oh man. <laughs> I do love a uh, canned pear, though. I do, too. Oh, I can just uh, drink that syrup out of it. Mm. Yeah, real good. But, yeah, two plates of those or one plate of deviled eggs. I was thinking, yeah, I'd rather have the deviled mm. eggs. Any day. Yep. Yeah, and, and we only have one deviled egg tray, I think. Well, we have a plastic one. Yeah, we do. And we have a, a glass one that's nice. But they'd be too big for the little holes in a deviled egg tray. A pear I half. I think so, yeah. But, anyway, uh, I'll... I'll try to remember to do that. I'll make make up some and bring them in tomorrow. Yeah. I wonder if they'll keep overnight in the refrigerator. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Is that how you glorify your success though with two deviled egg plates? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just let let them know. You got to let them know. Okay. And then um, as long as we're on the uh, topic of uh, Easter and eggs. Um. I go to Costco a lot, but I haven't been lately. I haven't seen that Costco has the already uh, dyed Easter eggs. That's stupid. 24 eggs already dyed for Easter. Yeah. but seven ninety nine. But they are, I mean, really, really good uh, dye jobs on them. You know, you get those little paws or whatever they are, little yeah, tablets. Yeah. It's yeah. so light, and, you know, yeah. you got to do it several times. But these, but these even, look good. They look professionally done. They do look professionally done, but the colors on them, it's like red, Yeah, there was a, a crimson Yeah, kinda. I mean, they're like fall colors. They're not Easter colors. They don't know pastels. It's like red, dark green, dark brown, black. It's like, well, okay, you're going to dye the eggs. Why not dye them an uh, Easter color? And do they call them Easter eggs? They call them colored eggs. Right. You know why or, that is. Because they don't want to say Easter. That's right. I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Because you, you can't say anything pro-Christian. Yeah. People get offended. Yeah, maybe. And say every other thing, but not, you know, you need, you, the Christians always have, we always have to be shut down. Yeah. It's offensive to say it. When you you did Easter egg hunts when you were a kid, right? Uh, well, this is what I was going to say. At first, I'm like, okay, people can't even dye their own Easter eggs. That's and that's, you know, but then I thought back to my childhood. And one of the, the bad memories of my childhood that always sticks with me is when, uh, my my parents got into a big fight because they fought all the time. But they got into a big fight on Easter Sunday morning um, and, because my dad got up and started dying Easter eggs. And I don't remember what they were fighting about. <clears throat> but I just remember that's when I think about dying Easter eggs, I think, about you know, about them getting in a big crazy fight. What would they have been fighting about over dying uh, Easter eggs? Um it could have been about something else or unless she was saying you you know you got up and you you messed up the kitchen or I, I, we were going to do that later you're doing it by yourself you're supposed to do it with the kids you know whatever that is wild to be fighting on easter sunday like that <laughs> yeah I mean, i always had a good time dying the eggs with my kids yeah you know that was fun but, but both of my kids are like i am and their attention span is about an inch long and they'd be into it for a while, and then they're just up, ready to do, and then Jody's left to do all of it. Do the rest of yeah. it, yeah. You know, they give you that little dipper to uh -huh. dip the egg, and it's always like a it's like a paper clip. Yeah. And it doesn't work at all, <laughs> and you're, dip, you're holding that thing, and then they give you the wax crayon to draw your design on it before mm -hmm. you die, and that works terribly. But it's fun. Yeah. Did y'all eat the Easter eggs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Love them. You still get an Easter basket? St I, your mom gives you Easter basket. She texted me the other day. What did she say? She was like, what do, what do we want for Easter dinner? And she gave me a bunch of options, and I told her what I wanted. Because I think I'm going to be the only person there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're going to have a nice meal. 
ham in an Easter basket. Y'all gonna have ham? We're not. No. I, I don't think my dad's crazy about ham. Really? What do y'all have instead? See, we always have ham, deviled eggs, and then you know rolls and. I mean, it's not like you know, rolling it out for Thanksgiving or Christmas. Or yeah, anything, I, I don't know. As I became an adult, all those traditional meals kind of went out the window, and it was yeah. like, what do we really want? Do we want Steak. steaks, you know, on Christmas and things like that? So we're going to have a roast beef, mm-hmm. um, mashed potatoes, gravy, corn on the cob, salad, and she'll make her deviled eggs yeah. she does. That's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. But, you know, it's only going to be Jody and Boy and me, I think. I don't know if my little friend Jenny and handsome husband Michael are coming over or not. They usually do. I yeah. think they usually are there for Easter, but we're still going to do pretty much, you know, Same thing. the the uh, Costco honey ham where you just put the stuff on it yourself and put it in yeah. the oven. It's good. And then I'll do deviled eggs and, you know, I don't know whether I'm going to make uh, homemade yeast rolls or not. Mm. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I always think yeah. about when we're talking about ham, I always think about Cubby and that honey baked ham. Mm-hmm. Because I've never had it, but the way he talks oh, about honey-baked ham, it's like describing somebody you care for or love deeply. Yeah. I mean, he romanticizes it. It makes me want one. But he's lost all that weight, so I don't know how much of that, you know, the candy he's going to eat. He goes, yeah, I get that candy off the top of it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know if he's still into it, but, man, mm. he made that sound so good. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so – um there are a couple of things that we have to get to today um, on the TJ's podcast for the Fanaticos uh, after we do the, the check-in with, uh, with Ryan, the slip and fall lawyer for uh, Law Day. So we have a lot left to come on uh, TJ's podcast. So don't touch that dial. You don't know where it's been. <laughs> Law Day next. TJ's podcast. Our friend, the world famous Richard Takato. I'm sorry, Richard Takato is uh, here with us, and um, thank you so much for reaching out to Richard. We he's telling us all the time about how many listeners are are reaching out and saying, "Hey, show me about that refi, and let's do some stuff like that." That's the way you put it, though. Show me about that refi. <laughs> what, what you got about that refi? <laughs> the, uh, so the, I mean, the cool thing is, is what is Ace has said, we have a lot of options and we have, re, you know, I'm doing refinances for people. You know, we have people down in Greenville, North Carolina. We have them you know, all, you know, at the beach at South Carolina. We have them in Charlotte. And the main thing is to refinance, make their finances better, make it, take the stress of every month. You know, if I save them $700 a month, $800 a month, it's a big deal for them. Yeah, it's a real big deal. Seven hundred dollars a month—that's fantastic. And again, yeah. we've talked about this before. Richard's a broker. That's how he gets more options than a bank. Yeah. He can do more. Just go to homewithrichard.com to get started. Homewithrichard.com, the Richard Takato Companies. Hi, I'm Thomas Davis, and let me tell you why I'm a proud member of Team Neogenics. If your nagging pain is keeping you from being active, do something about it. Join the long list of pros and average Joes who have found relief with our stem cell and regenerative therapies. After trying out the others, I decided to try Neogenic. My knees and shoulders haven't felt this good since my college days. If you want to get back in the game, do what I did. Visit Neogenic, where all you have to lose is pain. Our nation's second president, John Adams, always slept on the left side of the bed. He believed this would increase his chances of having positive dreams and a more successful next day. That's why every mattress we sell here at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress includes a left side. And for those that prefer waking up on the right side of the bed, our mattresses come with one of those too. This President's Day, you can save up to $500 on Tempur-Pedic sets. Only at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress. Back to TJ's podcast. Yes, yes. So excited. Today is another law day on TJ's podcast. So a uh, special treat for the Fanaticos, giving you something a little bit different. Uh, we have with us the official uh, legal expert of TJ's podcast. Uh, his name is former intern Wiki Ryan. Hey. Good morning. And um, Ryan's uh, real name is Ryan Toomey, and he is uh, an attorney uh, for a firm in Texas. Is it San Antonio? Austin. Oh, that's right, Austin. Your favorite, your favorite city in Texas. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you live there amongst all that, but 
this isn't the political show, so um, I promised people that I wouldn't turn it into the political show. Now, uh, Ryan specializes in um, um, civil cases of personal injury and things of that nature. So uh, one of the things that people are talking about the most nowadays is these weight loss drugs, Ozempic, uh, Kilimanjaro, um, I don't know any others. Um, but the one that is being um, singled out as a big time lawsuit is Ozempic, right? That, that, that's the one people are focused on right now as a class action suit. That's, that's the biggest one because it is the, the largest of the three, but I saw uh, against both company, there are two different companies that manufacture all of the drugs. Uh, the one that manufactures Mount Jaro, and then there's another, Trulicity I think is the other one, and then there's a different company that um, manufactures Ozempic and a couple others. Yeah, uh, but the biggest suit and the the biggest clash action again is against that company. Okay, so how does it work when uh, people have filed these lawsuits because of the side effects and things that they they <clears throat> say that the uh, Ozempic caused, like stomach paralysis? That's one of the 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 big things that people are talking about. They they had uh, filed these lawsuits, but then the government, the U.S. government, comes in and says you're going to have to turn that into a class action suit you can't you can't do them all you know separately is that right is that how they did that that's yeah that's how it happens a lot of times uh there are certain parameters to determine when a class action suit is required or necessary and a lot of times it's based on when there's uh there are a lot of similar cases and it's more efficient to have those cases combined into one instead of having a hundred thousand cases that are all very similar uh, because it would take a long time to get those cases tried in front of a jury um, i'll give you an example uh, i worked on a case when i started at my last firm that happened in 2012 suit was filed in 2014 it was originally set for trial in 2015 and it was finally going to go to trial in 2022 um, and it settled the Friday before the Monday trial. And so the government knows how inefficient the jury trial system is because there aren't enough courts. And in most, most cases don't go to trial. Yeah. Um, but for the ones that do, um, and ones like this, the bigger ones, you, you, you kind of have to have them combined. Otherwise you're, most people will die before they ever get to, to try the case. So does it matter, uh, is it easier to uh, prove uh, to a jury uh, to, to find a company liable if you're an individual suing somebody or in a class action, or is it doesn't matter? Um, I would say it does and doesn't matter um, because the burden of proof is gonna be the same either way. If it's a bunch of people combined, then you kind of spread the risk and you spread those expenses across um, all the different clients or plaintiffs yeah. that you have. Like Aaron Brockovich. Yeah, I mean, it, it works like that. Um, the, the, the basic part is that they do assign representative plaintiffs to represent the entire class. Yeah. On a lot of those, you, you're able to spread that risk around. And so it makes it a lot easier um, to, to handle. But typically, the law firm is... is putting the expenses up front uh, with the expectation that they'll be, you know, paid or, or the hope, I guess, is the best term for it, that they'll be paid on the on the back end of the case. Um, yeah, I think I saw uh, something like that on Better Call Saul. Yeah, it's, it's part of the contingency makeup. And so um, I imagine they get it pretty right. You know, we don't get paid unless you get paid and then yeah. we pay all the expenses up front and, you know, on... It's what I tell a lot of prospective clients and clients, you know, we assume all the risk because if you don't get anything, then that's money and time that we wasted. Yeah. You know, having to worry about, you know, the, did the, did the person mop in the floor at the grocery store, put the yellow sign down in the right place and all of that. I mean, 
I know you, you, you've got your investigative team out there, out there on that. Just kidding, a, just kidding. I know you're, I know you're a, a big professional. I mean, for God's sakes, look at that, look at that office you're sitting in with the degrees on the wall. Craziness, just oh my craziness. He's not our little intern anymore, Riggins. No, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. He's very smart. Yeah, he. Um, some people say that you know Baylor Law School is difficult. Some people do. I mean, I don't know. Think, isn't, don't you just have to go to church a lot to get a law degree from uh, Baylor since it's a Baptist college? There, are, there is church. There is a church there. I yeah. played a lot of video games when I was in law school, so I don't know how hard <laughs> it could possibly be. <laughs> okay, so you're looking at a case like this. It's a class action case against a drug company. That's got to have, uh, you know, attorneys salivating, right? Or is it hard to prove that a drug caused this um this uh, a ailment in you that you're having to deal with for the rest of your life like let's say just take the stomach paralysis part of it is that something that lasts forever and if it doesn't last forever then how much is that worth to each person that you had a, a temporary condition where your stomach you know was kind of paralyzed and your bowels didn't work properly or if it is permanent how much is that worth to a person who, who determines how much you're going to ask for in, in a law firm? Uh, so whenever you're, I mean, as far as what you're asking for, a lot of it is dependent on a, a number of factors, how much the medical expenses that have already been spent are, uh, what are the presumptive medical expenses in the future. So a lot of times, if the case is big enough and, and can afford it, is what we say, you hire a life care planner, a doctor, or someone who who specializes in coming up with those to determine what type of care the person will need as as they go throughout the rest of their life. So, you know, I'm 38 years old. Uh, what care will I need until I'm 80 if I make yeah. it that far? Um, and how much is that going to cost? Um, as far as those types, so those are what are known as defective product cases mm -hmm. and those are some of the most difficult because there is a lot you have to prove you have to prove that there was either a defect in the design a defect in the manufacturing or a, a marketing defect mm -hmm. which is a defect in the warning um, and typically you need to pay experts uh, who specialize in those areas and it usually takes more than one to prove that and so that's where it becomes difficult and expensive because as the lawyer then you have to be the one who edu who basically learns how all that stuff works yeah and then riggins do you know what they call it like if in this in this case when the uh when the plaintiffs have um a doctor that's telling you know people how you know this person is going to have this and then it's because i believe that it was this um, drug that caused it and all that and they put them on the stand you know what they call that in the legal world no a barking seal barking seal you put a barking seal on the stand and that's somebody you know that whenever you say bark they're going to bark what you want them to say is that true ryan uh i don't call them a barking seal i call them uh, we call them for the experts hired on the other side we call them painted ladies <laughs> oh, <laughs> painted barking ladies. seals painted ladies i'm learning all kinds of stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I learned that from a guy who's a um, an attorney and, and a talk show and host in Los Angeles. Named, they definitely named Bill Handel. Handel. He, oh yeah. Yeah. He, he, Handel he's, on the law. Yeah. He said it's a barking seal. <laughs> so that's my law school. <laughs> I think that call in radio show. That's a better law school than a lot of people get. So. <laughs> You should you should let Ryan hear that clip of the um, of the attorney. Oh, from this morning. Yeah, can you can pull it up, Rob? Yeah. Okay, he'd get a kick out of that. Yeah, I've started um, finding these. Uh, my son actually will, will send them to me um, of uh, these TikToks or whatever. Where they'll pull a clip from a courtroom, and the, <laughs> and it's funny because of uh, something that either witness says or the attorney says. Uh, like the other day, it was in Young Thug's uh, case and a witness for the prosecution. They were asking him questions and he goes, could I get some water or something? Because I'm high as hell right now. 
<laughs> yeah, I heard that one. That yeah. one was really. <laughs> so uh, there was one I had this morning that my son sent me. Um, you got it right. Yeah. It's it's very quick. It's the attorney and the judge is telling him, "Look, sis, let's just move on. You don't have to worry about that right now." And then the attorney's response. So you, you got to listen fast. I got to play it through my speaker on my computer. Oh, okay. So All right. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can get this to work. So okay. don't even worry about that. Okay. 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 I was saying that it's just not true. It's, it's, it's cap, to be honest. <laughs> said, it's not true. It's cap, to be honest. It's cap. <laughs> no cap, Judge. I'm going to use that today. I, yeah. I told, I told you that I have a hearing to go to, so I'm going to use. I'm going to tell the judge no cap. <laughs> yeah, try. Yeah, he's Let cap. us know how, if that he's works. Got <laughs> No cap. I'm sure it's going to go great. <laughs> <laughs> but do you remember the one? Of, um, I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times um, since I'm your hero and you hang on my every word. Uh, the guy in Alexandria, Louisiana, who um, the, the judge called him down and he said in court, oh, that ain't right, cuz. Yeah, come on, cuz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you to do that, Ryan. Oh, I, dare. Uh, I do get away with some pretty funny stuff when I'm taking depositions, and those are on the record and recorded. I can send you the one where I ask the guy what, what are his favorite pair of Jordans uh, that he has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad you can to, make it fun. I try to have fun with it because, you know, it's, it's serious, but it's not that serious. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not like somebody's life is hanging in the balance. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, they're going to go to prison for the rest of their lives or to the electric chair or anything. Well, we're just getting money. Yeah, that's all you're doing. Uh, when, is, when is the uh, wedding? Uh, we're looking at October, November. Okay. Well, that sounds like an escape plan to me if you don't even <laughs> know for sure. October, November. She's ready to just bolt at any time, I think. <laughs> Don't uh, she's not going to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we know you got court today, so uh, thank you for getting up early and uh, and talking, doing um, hanging out with us. You know we love you. Anytime, love you guys too. All right. Talk Thanks to you later. You okay. Bye. Bye. More of TJ's podcast is coming up. When it comes to losing weight, sometimes you don't even know where to start. You know that it needs to happen, but you need some help. Well, you start by going to acetj.com slash weight loss and ordering Calitrin. Calitrin is scientifically proven to help you lose weight, and it is not a drug. It is not a drug. Repeat that. So here's what you do. You go to acetj.com slash Calitrin. Order three months, and then you'll get three months free. Four months, four months free. That's how it works with Calitrin. Winter is here, which means you're just going to stay inside and not do anything fun and exciting, right? No, that is wrong. Because this year, you're going to go to acetj.com slash Gaston and see all of the incredible things that you can do right now in Gaston County. Everything is laid out for you from things to do to restaurants to bars to shopping to unique weekend activities. And we'll get you ready for the spring and the summer with a list of all their great festivals. Find all of this and much more at acetj.com slash Gaston. If you're so frustrated because you're having to run around all the time, you're so busy, you feel like you're not getting your family something great to eat, then you need Culver's. It's the perfect thing for you. Always made to order fresh, hot ingredients all day, every day. And not only do they have the freshest ingredients all day, every day, but they are a part of the community. They're proud to be a part of the Indian Trail community where they're under new ownership. Belmont, University area, Salisbury. Make them a part of your daily routine. Make it your new neighborhood spot. Short waits for the freshest food in town. Get details at eight tj.com slash culvers yep. welcome back world to tj's podcast podcast okay uh you know, i joke around a lot and um and I, I have a hard time and i always have uh talking about myself promoting myself pro promoting stuff that um that we we do as a company and and all of that and that's why i always make it silly you know like saying tj's fanaticos and creating that like it's a special fan club or something like i i mean i normally would hey go join my fan club but that's not that's not exactly what it is tj's fanaticos is just a cute name to call people who like the podcast 
and people who um who you know want to be part of it ace and i've always set up everything to where people who are in the audience are part of what we're doing you know that's why we have the ace and tj family we've always always said that instead of listeners or fans because we actually you know we we look at you as an extension of our family because if it weren't for you we wouldn't be anywhere you know and um and a lot of you have been with us for a long time and we've we've grown together but um if you go to acetj.com slash fanaticos uh that will help us out a lot because um you know this is this is something new and it's it's a lot harder to get feedback as as we're going along because uh it used to be where everything was live and four hours in the morning you could pick up the phone and call us and tell us anything that was on your mind and all of that well technology is a little different now and so uh the reactions and all are a little delayed so uh it it would really help us out since we're starting this and and on making sure that we're growing in the right direction according to what you want uh, if you just go to acetj.com slash fanaticos and fill out a survey there um tell us you know what you like what you don't like and you can even dm us that stuff if you if you want i mean you know i ain't scared <laughs> fanatico what i say fanaticos yeah yeah so acetj.com slash fanatico yeah because you're one fanatico and then people go okay well if you're using spanish why is it fanatico and not fanatica one's male one's female because fanatico is just generic like amigo is generic you either want to be in or you don't yeah i mean come on <laughs> <laughs> all right so um we'd really appreciate it if you did that for us oh uh, thank you <sighs> this is a difficult situation now a lot of times i don't i don't necessarily believe these stories that are on am i the a-hole on reddit um but let's just say that this is a real situation um it actually reminds me it's not meant to be funny but it reminds me of uh, something that they would have done on seinfeld or curb your enthusiasm you know something larry david would have come up with um this woman and her uh husband i think she's married they just bought a house and they bought some property well four years before they bought the property um a group of teenagers were driving drunk and hit a tree that is on her property and after that the family of uh one of the the teenagers that was killed put up a memorial right by that tree it's a four by four like four feet by four feet cross and some other things and she said about three times a year they come and uh put flowers around it and and you know treat it kind of like it's a grave site or something well she says she's been through some stuff of her own and she doesn't want every time she drives up to her house be reminded of something so sad and she wants the memorial taken down but she doesn't want you know she doesn't want everybody to think that she's the worst person in the world <laughs> yeah she has no connection to this family she didn't even know them. didn't even live in the area i don't think whenever the accident happened but she's like what what do i do because i definitely want it down which i can understand yes I mean, every time you drive up to your property, you don't want to, you know, have to look at um, basically somebody's grave and a sad, sad story about a teenager getting killed. But how do you tell the people when they come and say, "Hey, look, we're, I'm I'm getting rid of all this"? Number, well, number one, do you even try to broach the subject? Number two is how do you do it if you decide to do it? I don't know. I don't have an answer. That for is either crazy. I, and I, I like you I get it it is a reminder every time you pull in the mm -hmm. driveway here's the memorial for a, ki a child you know mm -hmm. it's a teenager but it's a kid uh yeah their death on your property but look if this is not a real 
story, if, if people that read it or whomever made it up, I have, I have a lot of respect for them. Yeah. Coming up with that is, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a really good, uh, a catch 22 kind yeah. of rock in a hard place yeah. situation and you know what larry david would say yeah <laughs> you go i mean it's not my problem what do i have to do so <laughs> now it's on me <laughs> yeah that's tough mm. we've got when i was growing up we had a bunch of them you know on the highway out to yeah. our house there were crosses and stuff and uh, one of my brother's friends had died in one of those places mm -hmm. and it was on people's property and it, they lasted for years and years and years so i don't know mm. how do you but she Gross. said that um, that the the tree is about ten feet off the road, right in front of her house. Yeah, and that's where the cross and everything is. And then people were saying, "Well, put up hedges around it, so when you look out your window, you don't have to see it." But every time I drive up, I gotta see yeah. it. You know, yeah. I wouldn't do anything. I would let them keep. But then again, <sighs> no. Would you want that to be what everybody else no. sees in no. your yard too? I mean, no, even I if it, if it didn't uh, really affect you as much. Yeah. I wonder if you could replace it with something. Like maybe you say like, can we put a tree there? Like I'm trying to meet you halfway. Like, well, there is a tree. Can, right. I mean, can we you know, cut that one down? Yeah. Can we put a <laughs> flower bed there? Or I don't know with the balloons and the teddy bears and the cross it's, you know, it, can we find a happy medium? Hmm. But yeah, I mean, am I the asshole? I I don't know that you're an asshole for one. But people will think you are, and they'll say you are. I think so. But the people on Reddit weren't really. They were kind of being sympathetic. Yeah, but they're not from the town. I think right. people that are from that town, she's moving in from mm -hmm. out of town. I think it's it's a tough, sticky situation. Isn't that crazy? <sighs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Because if I had decided that that I didn't want it out there, I would start to get, like I would be nice and not not move it, but I would get more and more put out by it every day. Yeah, and then you start to resent yeah. people. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's not good. If, if you moved into a house and they had like a pet grave, would you immediately get rid of that? I mean, the headstone? You mean, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Immediately. I mean, day I mean, one. I mean, I would probably say that the purchase of the house is contingent upon them getting rid of the the pet graveyard. That would be in the uh, paper. Yeah. Okay. So what do you do in this situation, Regans? You just let it go and then just let it bother you? No, I'm reaching out to them in a really respectful way. Yeah. And introducing myself first, maybe even invite them over for dinner. I'd love to have you over and then maybe you know, soften the blow a little bit rather than an email that says, Hey, I'm doing this A, B and C. I think you can soften it up in such a way that, uh, they become understanding of your situation mm -hmm. while still being respectful of the, the space right there. Can we do a flower bed? Can I plant a tree there? I just, you know. but when it comes down to it, I mean, it's the, the property of the person. Sure. Yeah. I mean, Larry David style, who's paying for the flower bed? If that's the compromise, yeah. why not? I'm, I'm, you well, expect me to pay for it? Yeah, yeah. But you chose but the house and it was there. So it's not like you went into it blind. Uh, you knew, so you knew it was going to be a sticky situation when you signed up to buy the house. But it's a four feet by four feet, four by four cross, homemade cross in the front yard. Yeah. It's tough. Sticky situation. Mm, mm. I really don't. I really don't know. But then again, you know, you'd have everybody pulling at you going, you can't do it. You can't yeah, oh, do yeah. it. And then other people, like, I, I would be telling somebody else, oh, you got to do it. That's your property. <laughs> but in her telling of the story on Reddit, she did use some like, kind of um, unsympathetic language. And she said, so some drunk teenagers wrapped their car around a tree. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would put it, I would put it that way. If yeah, I'm it trying sounds to, like she's already made up her mind. Like, yeah, she wants to already gone. asking like, am I an asshole for yeah. fix, you know, removing this? So I think that's not the right answer, but also, uh, <laughs> you don't want to live with it if you're not, if you're uncomfortable with it. Yeah. Mm. 
That's a tough one. Yeah. I'd probably uh, move. Or I would I mean, say Vandals took it down. Yeah. It's, I don't know what happened. Uh, we were go- we were on vacation, and we came back, and Vandals had had gotten it. Oh, no. Just tore it up. <laughs> tore it up. And, oh, I was going to say they burned it, but you can't be burning a cross. No. <laughs> That's a whole different you know, bag of worms. Can of worms. Yeah. <laughs> But that sounds like something that I, you know, that would happen to me. Yeah. You know, you know, like that, that neighbor that would just wait on me to walk outside and then pounce on me as soon as I walked out in my backyard. Yeah, for sure. You know, and then look at me like, entertain me. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of Larry David Seinfeldish type moments in my life. It's, I can relate to a, a lot of them. Sure. But I don't think I'd tell. I am sweet still, so I, I wouldn't tell the family to get rid of the thing. I think you can find find a happy. Well, it depends on how close to the house it is, too. I mean, is it a big yard, or is it, you know, in my mowing space? You know? Yeah, yeah. There's a house that's in a neighborhood near me, and it's for it's been for sale for a really long time. Whereas other houses have been sold really quickly. And it's because in the front yard, there's like a 20 ton boulder that sticks up and it takes up the majority of the front yard. Yeah. You can't even see the house from the sidewalk. This boulder is so big. And uh, one of the guys I know, he said, yeah, they can't sell because that big rock. And he said, well, some people say, look at it like, well, I won't have to cut the grasses often because there's mm. this huge rock. And he, and he said, but the other flip side of it, birds shit all over it. <laughs> And people have said, well, I can power wash. And he goes, no, you can't. It's like concrete. Once that shit is on. So now it's this huge rock, but it's also covered in crap. Kind of takes away from the uh, the curb curb appeal. How much is rock removal? It, it, <clears throat> it's, this, it's the size of this room. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't even know that it's possible. And it's on yeah, the, maybe it, you bust it up or something. Maybe. It's crazy. Looks like the top of a mountain just sticking out. <laughs> and it's just covered in bird crap. They've tried yeah. to clean it, but they can't get that stuff on. I mean, you can't even sell ad space on it. No. It's just covered in bird crap. It's a mess. But, like, you know, would you take it for a lower price on the house? Like, eh, maybe some people would. Mm-hmm. And if you've got a, a child's you know, death memorial in your front yard, I'd want a discount. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, yeah, they should, she should charge them um, a fee to keep the memorial there. Yeah. Charge them? Like rent? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd go over well. Then you are an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if you would go go to that uh, acetj.com uh, slash fanatico and uh, and tell us what all what all you want us to know about your listening to TJ's podcast, we would we would appreciate it. All right. That's it for today. It's been a full full program uh, that's just been overflowing with interesting information and laughter and mirth <laughs> and merry song so thanks for watching thanks for listening love you bye the world it's tj's podcast i screwed that up rob i it had the slider the down end. on the end serving the world it's tj's podcast